Well, hello there. This is Julia. Thank you so much for joining me for a new card making video. I know it's been a while since I shared a new card, so I'm super excited to be back. For this one, I made a slimline birthday card, and I also added these cute little peekaboo windows using a die from Lawn Fawn. So if you want to see how I made this, just keep on watching. I started by die cutting a scalloped slimline panel. As usual, I will have all my supplies listed below the video. And I masked off the, uh, the scalloped edge so that I would have a nice clean line right at the stitching edge. And I'm ink blending the background with oxides. I'm using scattered straw for the yellow. Then the transition is spun sugar, then kitsch flamingo, and finally my brightest pink, the picked raspberry. It looks a little crazy here, but the picked raspberry is really only a thin line at the top. I'm just having a lot of pink there because of the masking tape. But once I remove it, it looks much better, I promise. I'm not being too careful with the blending because I will cover most of it with images anyway. I'm adding lots of shimmery splatters with um, metallic watercolors. These are from Fintech, or if you're in Europe, they're called Coliro. And now my favorite part, removing the masking tape. And this is just, I love doing that. It's just such a nice reveal. And then I'm adding two grassy hills. I use the uh, slimline grassy st uh, dice from Lawn Farm. And I'm ink blending the grass with shabby shutters, twisted citron and mowed lawn. And I also have rustic wilderness up top and I'm using that in addition to the other colors for the treetops because I wanted to be, uh, wanted there to be a difference in color between the grass and the tops of the trees because I always think it looks kind of weird if that's all like the same shade of green. I'm adding some de definition at the tops of the hills with mowed lawn. I always like to have a nice fade of color on the hills so that they really can, you know, give some dimension on the card that they look like somewhat further in the back. And for the treetops, I'm also adding in the Twisted Citron mowed lawn and Rustic Wilderness right at the edge of the uh, treetops so that they have some nice dimension and are just a little bit darker than the grassy hills. Just like I did with the grassy hills, I'm just adding a little bit of shading on the edges. And when I bring this in, it really, really changes the color of the entire tree chop, I find. And these little guys were a little bit finicky to ink blend. And I used the Lawn Fawn Treehouse dye for those treetops and I just cut off basically one side of them in like a rectangle shape so that they would fit in both corners of my cart. And now I'm just adding some splatters for a little bit of interest in rustic wilderness. For the trees I used the backdrop die from Lawn Fawn and it's the lift the flap tree backdrop. And I always like getting a little bit more bang for my buck. So you don't have to use all the backdrops from Lawn Fawn just as they are. I just cut out two of the trees to fit on my slimline card. I cut them to size so that I would roughly have them in the height I needed them. They were a little bit short for my panel, but I knew that I would be adding grass and the treetops. So it worked out perfectly fine. Uh, for those lift the flaps, I always make sure I ink blend the back because you open that flap and you don't want that to be white. And I'm also cutting out two rectangles that I'm ink blending with the same two Lawn Fawn inks, which is dough and walnut. Uh, just to make sure that I have a backing for my trees. So when you open it, it basically looks like you're looking inside the tree and not through the back of your cart. And then it's time to color my images. I stamped out the cute little squirrels from Let's Go Nuts from Lawn Fawn and I'm using my Copic markers to color them in. I'm using E15, E13, E11 and E00, which is my favorite combination for squirrels because it's like, well, it's hard to describe. It's like my version of like a pastel squirrel because it's not super bright and orange. But it's warm toned enough to where it looks like a squirrel. And I wanted to add a little bit more definition. So first off, I'm adding some RV63 and RV10 to the cheeks. And then I wanted a little bit more definition around the edges of my squirrel. So I'm adding a second layer, which is something I pretty much always do because it just 
really brings the image to life, I find. So I'm using E18, a little bit darker than I started with before. I always like to add a tiny bit darker shade on my second layer so that the entire image doesn't get too dark. Then I'm blending that out with E15, not pulling out the color far at all, basically just going over the same area, the same with the E13, because I want to keep the, the image is small, so I want to keep it overall pretty light. With the E11, I'm pulling out the color quite a bit further, leaving some highlights in the center and that I'm blending out with E00. And that kind of, at least I find, brings the squirrel to life just a tiny bit. Again, adding a little bit more blush with the RV10. Since it's a birthday card, I thought it would be really cute to have like the little acorns as gifts. And I colored those in with E44, uh, E42 for the top. And then E40 for the bottom since it's just a really, really tiny area. But I wanted the top a little bit darker, so I'm going in with E49 and then E44. I wanted it to be like slightly rainbow colored, not too crazy. So I'm going in with some greens. I'm sorry, the top, the bottom left is a little bit out of frame, but I'm using the same colors as I do for the balloons. And in a bit, I will realize and I will move it up slightly. So I'm blending that out with YG21. And I also have all the marker colors listed in the description box below. For my blue greens, I'm using BG18 as my darkest shade. Then BG15, just to blend that out, not pulling the BG15 out too far. BG13, which I always find a little bit hard to blend with a BG15 because the colors have signed a sort of different hue, I find. But if you blend it long enough, it works out. Then I'm using BG11 and BG10. And I'm using the same color combination minus the BG18 for the speech bubbles. I always like the way they look when they have like lots of shading. And my favorite way to color them is with teals. I saw it first on uh, one of Megan's cards from the Lawn Fawn design team and it looked amazing. And now I, I kind of can't do them any other way. <laughs> So I did the other speech bubble exactly the same way and in the video as in the little clip I showed I didn't add the second speech bubble but I decided once I had finished the card it really needed a second speech bubble so I just popped that into the little second opening as you will see in the pictures. Then I'm adding some yellow colors to the balloons. I'm using Y17, 15, 13 and 11. Then I also wanted to add some reddish pinks. I also used the same color for the wagon. I stamped the wagon twice. I wasn't happy with the first stamping, but I only cut out the top wagon, so I'm only coloring that one. Using R39, R37. And I really love the R30s because they're like a pinkish red, not an orange red. Or is it like a cool toned red? That's, I think, the more accurate term. Blending that out with R32 and finally R30. Going over it a little bit more so that I would have a nice transition on the little wagon. And then finally for my purple I'm using RV60 markers. Starting in my darker shade with, with RV69, RV66, RV63 and RV10 as my lightest shade. Because unfortunately there is an RV61. I'm hoping they come out with that because that would be pretty. But RV10 works in the meantime. I also added the same shading to the speech bubble, but I'm not any uh, the thought bubble, but I'm not ending up using it. Here you can see that I added my images to the back of the tree before I adhere to my card, which is really important because otherwise. You'll just have to finagle it in there, which does work, but it's harder to do. And then I'm just adding the little rectangle that I cut to size so that it would fit behind the tree so that you don't see like the ink blended background, but actually it looks like you're looking inside the tree. I always make sure that I carefully bend the little flap so that they don't like crack when the recipient opens it, that they already have like a little bit of give. 
Now I'm also adding some acorns to the second tree. And I'm just adding those with some liquid glue. I just added glue to the top and the bottom of the rectangle, glued it in, so that I would have the opportunity to just slide in the little acorns. For the squirrels it would have been like a lot to move like such large images, but the ac acorns were fine just to fit under there. I started with the one that would be the tallest, so that there's some room at the bottom, and now I'm just finagling it in there. I also made sure that the acorns have different ribbon colors because I always think that's like a really nice touch. And once I assembled the card, I liked it, but I thought the second one could also use like a little sentiment. So I added the second happy birthday speech bubble, which I thought was cool. Now I'm adding the first grassy panel and I wanted the second tree to look like it's a little further back so that there's a, uh, like a grassy panel in front of it. So for this one, I'm adhering it up a little bit further so that the flap has enough room to open, which is always something to be mindful of. I found that out because I adhered it a little bit too low and then I had to peel it back up because the grass was in the way of the flap opening. But as you can see, the tree is a little short for a slimline card, but with the grass and the treetops, you won't know. Well, you will, but the recipient won't unless you watch this. Then I'm adding the tree. And for these ones, I'm really just mindful of making them fit with like the sides because those I won't be able to cover up. And for the left one, as this one is in front, I also lined it up with a bottom edge. The top, I didn't really pay attention to because I knew I could cover it up with the treetops. Then I'm layering the two, two treetops so that they have a little bit of dimension so that it looks like a nice full tree. And I'm adding those on with liquid glue as well. And then for the other one I'm doing the same thing, but I die cut out one of the larger like cloudy shapes and the little tiny cloud shape, I don't know what to call those. And I'm adding that in the middle so that it looks like a little growth in front of the tree. I'm adding the little cloud outlines all over the background just for a little bit more interest. I really like those outline dies from Lawn Fawn because they don't, they're not too massive on a background but they add nice little interest. I thought it would be super cute to have one of the um, squirrels pull a wagon full of the little gift acorns. I added the acorn like stack that comes with the squirrel stamp set just in the back to make it look a bit fuller so I didn't have to cut and color a ton of those little gift acorns but I made sure to add those in the front so that they are like front and center and I played around with the layout I added the acorns and the balloons to the squirrels how I thought I would like it I added foam squares to the back and now I just played around with the layout a bit and now I'm actually gluing down my images. I started with the speech bubble because that kind of determines where the rest of the images can go. And then I'm also adding in the cute little tiny squirrel in front of the wagon. The jumping squirrel right in the center so that it fills up the scene nicely jumping to the other one. For this one I added the balloons. I thought I could add the balloons first, but I realized that that wasn't working because that would kind of put the other squirrel in an awkward position. So I just decided to move both, just peeling it up carefully, trying not to rip the background. And then I'm gluing this, the balloons to the squirrel, just using the foam that's already on the back of the squirrel. And then it's easier to position both of them at the same time. And also making sure that the tail of the squirrel isn't interfering with a little flap. Then adding what Kelly from Lawn Fun called the yay squirrel, which I think is just so fun. And then the final one, just holding the cute little acorn. 
I added some white gel pen highlights to the balloons, just some little dots and stars because I always think that looks super cute on balloons. And then I'm also adding some Stardust stickles for a little bit of shine on the speech bubble as well as the bows of the little acorns, just so that you have a little bit of glitter there. This is a pretty low glitter card for me, so I could add a little bit. And that finishes off my card for today. I had a blast making this one. I added the little bunting banner to the wagon so that it really looks festive. There we have the little happy birthday. And as you can see in the photos that are coming up now, I added a second speech bubble. You are awesome is the second speech bubble, which I think is just so fun for a birthday card. On the screen, you will have two more videos that you can watch if you like, and I hope you'll join me for the next one. Until then, I hope you have an amazing day. Bye!